What's up guys, this is Derek. I'm gonna show you guys a lot of the soldering tips and tools that you're going to need for your project. All right guys, I'm gonna go over, first is your soldering iron here. Uh, the sponge here, you want to get wet. Uh, not that it's sopping wet, but wet to touch. Um, and then also we have some wire in here. This is a, a little bit of shrink tubing that I'll show you how we use that shrink tubing. Uh, some pliers are helpful, snips and wire strippers for sure a necessary thing. We also have our solder. Uh, if you do have one of these, this is good. Instead of a sponge, you can use some of this brass here. And then uh, I'm gonna use these little stack of cards I've taped together to uh, be an offset. And I'll show you why we're gonna use that when we solder our board here. And we'll also solder some wires. And we also have our heat gun that we can use to use for our shrink tubing. You can also use a lighter if you don't have a heat gun. All right, first thing you're gonna wanna heat up your solder iron here. I go all the way and then just back off a little bit. Um, when you heat this up, the most important thing is to take care of the tip of your solder iron. Um, you always want to have solder on it. So we're going to clean it off a little bit. So you can see we have a nice little tin there and it's not burnt up or anything. And when we put solder to this, it will melt right away. So at any point, you always want to keep solder on there. So if I'm putting this away, I'll clean it off put the solder in there. Then when I go to solder, I take that tip off, wipe that solder off, put a little bit on, and then we will go to solder. And when we're done, we clean it off after we're done soldering and we add more solder to it, both sides, and put that away. And if you're done or gonna be sitting there for a while, you can turn the heat down. Um, in this case, we'll continually be soldering. So. But that's just the most important thing is take care of the tip of your solder iron. If you don't, it'll get burnt up and it will start beating up on the tip and it will be way harder than it needs to be. All right guys, the first thing we're gonna teach you is soldering the compass board. Now your compass might look a little bit different um, depending on the quarter, but these are probably gonna, they're all gonna look something similar. Uh, in this case, we have our VIN, our ground, and all of our pins here, and it will come with a set of headers. So we need to apply this to here. So first we need to cut these. So we need one, two, three, four, five, six right here. And whenever you cut snips or things like that, always direct them towards away from other people. You don't want this to fly out towards your face. Wearing safety glasses is also very important while doing this stuff. What I'll do is I'll put these into my breadboard and then I can put the header or the pins there. And if you look really close, you can see the board is tilted down. We don't want that. We want this as level as possible. So with our compass, we want this as level as possible to get the most accurate reading. That's where I've used some, just some playing cards or just any paper, thick paper that you have. I've taped these together and down and got them to be pretty much the perfect height that I'm going for. So now the board will actually sit level like we want. All right, guys, we're gonna go ahead and solder these pins. Now, when you solder these pins, you kind of want to jump back and forth. I usually start on this end and then I'll solder on this end. The idea is that you don't want it to, it's gonna want to rise up and things like that. So you want to keep this as level as possible. Now, when you bring your solder iron over, make sure to clean the tip, just like we talked about earlier and get a nice setup. And we're gonna add a little solder to the tip here. So I got a little there. And we're gonna come in at a, a bit of a, like a 45 and then add solder to the opposite side. And what that will do is kind of create like a, we're going for like a Hershey kiss look on these, on the solder. So add a little heat to there and then a little bit of solder and the heat will go where it needs. And then you pull up and it will dry. Same thing, add a little bit of solder there, bring it in. Now we're gonna do the opposite side, add a little bit of solder and the heat will go and then we pull up. And you get a nice little Hershey kiss there. And we'll continually go back and forth on these pins until we're complete with all of them. If you add a little too much heat to it, you can start to burn the board. So it's kind of like you wanna get in and out as quick as possible. And that's it. Now we've soldered all of our pins. We'll go through and inspect, make sure to clean the tip and add solder back to both sides and put away our solder iron. 
Okay, now I'm going to inspect our soldering. Uh, what we're looking for is that we want it to be completely encompassing the pins that were sticking out. Any holes in there, you can start to get porosity in there and it will start to eat away. And that can be a problem in the long term. Um, but right now we're just gonna make sure that the pins aren't touching, that you're not short circuiting any of these pins. And that overall, there's no holes or gaps and we have a good solid connection. Our board's nice and flat. So we're just going through and taking a close look at those pins. We can pull the header off. And now we've got our board ready to go. And you can also solder wires to this if you want, but putting it to your bre uh, breadboard is gonna be your best bet. All right guys, I'm gonna show you a couple different types of wiring that you're gonna see. Uh, you have these braided wires, which is a bunch of little strands. And whenever you get these, what I'd like to what I like to do is twist them so that they're kind of wrapped up and they're a little bit easier to work with. So you can twist these and now you have a nice solid kind of wire. But most of what you're gonna wanna work with, this is what you're gonna find on a lot of your uh, parts that we provide you. But we also have our solid gauge wire. What's nice about this is that these go right into your breadboard and it's a lot easier to plug these in um, compared to these. Now you can do this, but we're gonna want to tin these. And I'm gonna show you how we can tin these and plug this into a breadboard as well, as well as connect these wires, solid gauge to braided wires, or solid gauge to solid gauge, or braided wire to braided wire. So there's a couple different techniques for this. Okay, with your uh, wire strippers here, um, you have cutters in the back. I'm gonna show you how you can cut the wires just like that. And then when you need to strip, uh, you figure out what size you're working with. In this case, these are about 20 gauge, and then you'll clamp down, and when you pull it off, it will pull the plastic coating off. And then for example, these I like to twist. So just a little recap, you can twist those. And then this is solid gauge, same idea with these, but at the end, you end up with a solid gauge wire. Okay, when we have a braided wire and a solid gauge wire, one of the techniques I like to use is to wrap the braided wire around the solid gauge wire. So you got this nice little tw like twist around it. So it's hold holding right there. And then with your helpful little handy arms here, you can attach those there. Bring those closer together. And be set up for that. Now what we're gonna do is we're gonna wanna solder these two pieces together. If at this point, uh, if these two ends are connected, uh, you'll want to put the shrink tubing on before you kind of twist these wires up. In this case, we have end, but just a he heads up that you might want to figure out how much shrink tubing you're gonna wanna want have here and cut that. So we know how much shrink tubing we want, then you can make sure to have this sleeved back here somewhere. So once you're done, you can sleeve this over and shrink tube the wires together, but we'll show you how to do that afterwards. But we're gonna solder these wires right now. Now what I like to do is I like to put the tip, the hot iron underneath and add solder to the top. So you gotta have enough little solder built up on the tip here. And then as you bring it up, it will start to transfer that heat to the wires and you can slowly add more solder to it and it will actually go over everything. If you're on there for too long, what will happen is the wire itself, like the, the co covers on it will start to melt. And you wanna be on there long enough to get the solder on, but not too long that you start to melt the wires themselves actually. If you need to clean up anything, um, you can use a pair of snips and clean up some of these edges. You can see that wire sticking out there. You can actually snip that off. The snips here, you can see I got a little extra sticking out there. You can snip that away. Same thing, make sure when you snip these things that they go away and not towards you in your face. And now we're gonna add the shrink tubing over the edge here. Like I said, this might be further along on your wire, especially if these are connected to something like a servo or your power supply or something like that. So we're gonna cover over the edge here. So it's nice and snug. Now we're gonna use our heat gun and shrink this tubing around there. And what this does is it allows it, it protects the solder itself. So as it heats up, the tubing will shrink. Watch out, the tip of that will get hot. 
Now we have our solid gauge wire to our braided wire here, and it's all connected and protected with a little bit of shrink tubing here. Now that's a solid connection and won't break. And that's what we're gonna go for when we're connecting a lot of these wires. Let's say you get into a case where you want to solder uh, the solid gauge wire to solid gauge wire. Uh, it's very simple. It's the same idea as the braid wires, but you want a little bit extra with the solid gauge here, and you're gonna wrap the solid gauge around it. Um, using a pair of pliers definitely helps, but you're gonna do the exact same thing, but just bend them around. You can hook them in however you want. And now once you're here, use the handy arms and solder them. Let's say you come across a point where you want braided wire to braided wire. What I like to do is to get them a little fanned out and then interlace them. So they're kind of mushed up in there. And then you twist them together from the center. And that gets a nice hold between all of the wires. And then the same thing you do is you solder that over. And once you have that, it's a really strong hold between the two wires. When you have your resistor here, you can either snip these and put them into the breadboard, or if you wanna keep the length, use some of this spare tubing that you stripped off of your wiring, and you can actually slide this right over there. And when you bend this and you plug it into your breadboard, this looks much more, a lot nicer, and it prevents you from short-circuiting something with a, a wire coming out and touching your wire short circuiting, this will prevent that from happening. So it's just a little pro tip for you guys. If you come across where you wanna put braided wires into your breadboard, it can be kind of tricky. What you wanna do is twist these wires as tight as possible. And then once you have that, we're gonna use a little bit of solder to tin these. So you have a nice thin layer of solder on there. So with handy arms here, we're gonna add a little bit of solder there, same thing. Make sure to clean the tip off, both sides. Add a little bit of solder. Now, you're gonna put a little bit of extra solder on here so you have a nice little bit of solder on there. And then you're just gonna go across this. Add a little bit of solder. And then it's just a nice tin, just like that. And then you're done. With a pair of snips here, I, uh, you'll see you'll get a little bit of extra when you come off here. And this is a little bit too long, but if I snip it to where I want it, same thing, make sure you're snipping away. Now this can actually plug in to my breadboard. And if you need a little help, a little bit of hairs can actually plug in. So now that's actually plugged in there and good to go.